Yeah, so today we're going to go over the signing agent 101, kind of just an overview of your responsibilities as a signing agent and just kind of the common errors and issues that come up. Okay, so first of all, let me tell you about our mission in doing this. Uh, we want to develop greater partnerships with you as our signing agents. We need you. And we don't want it to be an uncomfortable relationship. We want it to be a good one. We want to develop partnerships. That's really always our goal, whether it's with our clients or if it's with our notaries, that's what we want. And we want to provide you accessible and affordable and by affordable, I mean free training that better equips you to perform the loan signings and do your job better. There's all sorts of programs out there. Um, some of them are very expensive and I don't think that they're uh, worth the price. I want you to get affordable training that makes it to where you have 100% confidence on your signing. That's what we want. And we also wanna help just provide general education and perspective on the real estate industry in the hopes of just making the entire process better for our signers and for our clients. That's our goal. And that's why we're doing this. Uh, this is the fourth training class so far, and we hope to keep, keep going. I'll tell you a little bit about our company. Um, Coast to Coast was established in 2001. Um, the, it was actually just one notary. She never intended to start what has become a signing company, but she never said no to work. And, and this is why we're busy like we are right now. We're an international signing company. So we help signers sign their docs all over the world. I just helped to coordinate a signing in India last week. So we do it all over the world, primarily within the States. Uh, we started out in Southern California. So we're uh, coast to coast, we do businesses coast to coast, but we're actually SoCal signings because that's where we started out. But coast to coast better uh, expresses what we do. We specialize in loan documents, but we can help uh, anybody get any kind of notarial documents signed. Uh, we primarily work with escrow, title, and lenders. Those are our primary clients to help uh, facilitate their loan signing needs. Now, we primarily work with clients who we will say, oh, sorry about that, I forgot to mute myself, uh, who have a large desk, which means they have lots of work all over the country. Um, I have heard out there, I try not to pay too much attention to it, but that there's some competition between uh, an individual notary signing agent and a signing company. But the truth is you can't do the work of every escrow agent who has large desks, right? Because one escrow agent might have work in California, Pennsylvania, Nebraska, Florida, all over. And you can't do all of those jobs, right? So they come to signing companies because we'll have our favorite notaries in all of those locations. So that's really why one might go to a signing company. So where we can handle all their, their signings. And it also helps escrow and lenders um, go to one place. Otherwise they're gonna have to start their own signing company because they have work all over the country. So that's why a company might go to signing company or signing agency. That's why there isn't any competition. We need each other in lots of ways. There are certain escrow agents that you're not gonna get the work from unless it's through a signing company. So we need each other in some ways. So that's just a little bit about us. Let's talk about what you need as a notary to become a signing agent. You always need a background check. Now in many states, you have to do like a live scan when you become a notary. I know that's how it is here in California, but you'll also need an additional background check from the National Notary Association, NNA. So this is a yearly background check that you must arrange and obtain. Um, I believe they raised the price. It used to be 65, I think it's 75 now. That's all you need to purchase. They also have additional items that you can purchase, but all you need is the background check portion. In order to do work with all the title companies, you'll need to be Fidelity approved. 
through coast to coast, you can get Fidelity approved. Basically, Fidelity approval just means that you have an NNA or Sterling background check. I always suggest NNA just because it's easier to for us to locate. Um, and then you, the Fidelity approval comprises of the background check and you filling in about 10 pieces of paper, signing and adding just a little bit of information. Uh, if you need to get Fidelity approved, make sure to email training at C2C signings and we'll help you get approved through us. So we're approved as a vendor for Fidelity and then you will be under our umbrella. So that will open you up to taking work from every title company and every signing company, you need to be Fidelity approved. There are certain clients that we have that we have a limited database of Fidelity approved notaries. So we want to get you Fidelity approved. Right now we do have a backlog in order to get those approvals because we're only allowed to submit five approvals a day, but let's get you in there. So if you're not already Fidelity approved, let us know and we'll help you get that done. Now, technically in many states, you can become a notary and start doing loan signings immediately with little training. Uh, there are training programs out there. Um, I don't really officially recommend any training program. I don't think that there's one training program that's gonna get you confident enough to do a signing and do a perfect job the first time. So you really need resources, right? And so again, that's why we're providing this. Uh, mentoring is important. So if you need a mentor in your area, let me know. I We have notaries all over and notaries we have relationships with. So we can hook you up with someone to mentor them. But that is why we're providing this program. Okay, so let's just talk about what happens when you get a signing. So say Coast to Coast or any company or escrow company gives you a signing. Scheduling and communication is critical. So. The moment you get that signing, if you're on another signing or you're busy, the moment you can call the signers and schedule the appointment. Introduce yourself, um, be flexible with the signer. We, it, this job is all about communication and customer service, right? So we need to communicate with the borrowers, provide them the highest level of customer service. Same with the company that's hiring you. Communication is critical. Um, when you're getting signings, make sure to, like I say, be flexible, but don't overpromise. Um, some of you will have maybe daytime jobs and they're starting out in the evening. If you have a really small window of time, it's going to limit the amount of jobs you have. So you have to have some flexibility. Uh, maybe you're av available in the evenings. If you set, well, I can do it only before nine, it's probably not going to work out. You need flexibility. Um, don't overbook yourself though. If you overbook yourself, there's gonna be problems. There'll be no shows, late appointments, and lots of people will start getting upset. So be realistic, be flexible, but don't overbook yourself. Um, and if you need tips for how to book yourself, always email us and let us know. I would say a safe bet is an hour and a half between signings, depending on um, driving as well. So maybe it'll take you 15 minutes to print the documents, 20 minutes to travel, and then 45 minutes for the actual signing. So generally schedule your signings within an hour and a half to two hours of, the, of each other once you start getting many signings. Um, what if you accept a signing and then you can't do it after all? Reassignments are very common, especially with COVID. We've experienced lots of asking to be reassigned very short notice. Um, if you must be reassigned, which happens, right? Life happens. I One time I was on my way to a signing and I got in a car accident, I had to be reassigned. It happens. Try not to make it a habit. Some notaries will get into the habit of asking to be reassigned. And for example, on our team, we just can't use a notary that keeps asking to be a reassigned. So when you have to give us the maximum amount of notice, because some areas that used to take me an hour to find a notary, now take me five hours. Or I can't find a notary at all if it's same day rush, right? Which is a, the bulk of our work is same day rushes. So if you must be reassigned, communicate. Now, say you put an email on our website that says I need to be reassigned and the signing's still in your name. That means that it hasn't been reassigned. 
call all the numbers you have for us, email us. We always say it, scream until you get a response. It's very important. Um, I've had notaries say they need to be reassigned and that message, they say it to the wrong person or that message gets lost and then the signing gets missed. So communication is big. And just looking at your web, looking at the dashboard. So if you're using SnapDocs, look at SnapDocs. If that signing's still in your name, you haven't been reassigned. So keep pushing until that happens. But try to limit your number of reassignments. And that's where I say be flexible, don't, but don't overpromise. Uh, something that's a huge no-no is to accept an appointment and then you get another offer and you take that one instead. So if maybe if it's with a few days advance notice, that's not as big of a deal. But if it's the same day within the hour or two, big no-no. Take the job that you assigned to first and complete that one. That's just how you're gonna build loyalty and partnerships, right? Um, we wanna keep giving you work. And, and so it's a, it's a two-way street, right? We do our part, you do your part. Now fee negotiation, this is a big one. Um, sometimes the fee or maybe base fee isn't adequate, right? Depending on the type of product, uh, the location, the signers, there may be all these other variables. The general rule is to negotiate the fee prior to accepting the assignment. Uh, the reason why is because Coast to Coast generally has a flat fee for our cl client. So we can't bill more and our margins are slim. Contrary to popular belief, our margins are slim. We make money by doing lots of signings. So if before the signing, 30 minutes before the signing, you decide you need 50 more, we might be losing money, losing lots of money. So negotiate prior. That way we can come to our client and say, this is the fee. Can you accommodate an additional fee? Because lots of times those notary fees are pre-decided in the settlement statement. So if you want to, to increase it, that form needs to be redone. So fee negotiation is best prior to accepting the signing. Sometimes there are other factors that make it so where it has to happen after the fact. And we'll discuss a little bit of how you can make sure um, that you cover your back when that happens in a minute. Let's talk about late and no-show consequences. If you're gonna be late, communicate to the borrowers, to us, to everybody that you've been in communication with. Sometimes borrowers are on tight schedules, right? So we need to make sure that they know what's going on and we know what's going on. Just the other day, I had a client call me and ask me where the notary was and the notary communicated to the borrower that they were gonna be late, but not to us. And so that resulted in multiple calls to try to ensure that the notary is on their way. So if you're gonna be late, it happens, right? There are sometimes things that happen and you can't help it. Communication. Now, if you for, totally forget about a signing, it happens. It's probably happened in my career five times where I've forgotten about a signing. It's a horrible feeling. The best advice I can give you is constantly be looking at your schedule, checking your emails, looking at snap docs, checking your text messages and keeping a good schedule. The consequences can be huge. Uh, not only is the signer upset, our clients upset, and they can ask us not to use a notary who's done that. So then that means that we can no longer use you because of that. So communication, again, mistakes happen. Like I said, it's happened to me. You're busy during your day and you forget. Communication and looking at your schedule, keeping a, a nice detailed schedule, is really important. Now back to the fees real quick. I actually spoke with our uh, one of our accounting admins and he gave me this tip. So when you get a signing with us, you're emailed a confirmation and it's gonna look something like this right here. Print that confirmation out or keep a, an electronic record of that confirmation. And if adjustments on the fees need to happen, make a note. So like for example, on this signing, the flat fee was 75, but then because you had to scan back the docs, you spoke with David Matro on 326 regarding an additional $10 for scan backs, and it was approved. By making that note, if say you don't get paid that additional money and you're reaching out to our accounting, you're gonna know exactly who and when that additional fee was given. So this is really important and it protects you as well. Sometimes notes get lost on our end. 
We might do hundreds of signings in a day and fees accidentally don't get added. So cover your back, put the name of the person you spoke with, maybe a phone number, then and the date. Keep detailed notes. This is gonna protect you and us and help us make sure you get the, the fee that you, uh, you deserve. So that's just a little tip, print out that confirmation. Okay, so you've scheduled the signing right when you receive the appointment. Um, you've uh, spoken with coast to coast, you're good to go. Let's talk about printing because this is a big issue. Get to know your printer. Um, if you don't have a printer, I've recently talked to some notaries who print their documents like at a UPS or a FedEx. Don't do that. Invest in a printer. You're going to start making money on your investment immediately. It's the cheapest way to be a notary, right? So get a printer and get to know it. I am not a tech whiz. I just go on YouTube and that's how you can get to know your printer. Type in the name of your printer, start watching all the videos on it. Get to know your printer and how it works. Uh, beware of cutting off documents. And I'll show you an example of that in a minute. So that's when a set of dots is scanned over in maybe legal, legal size paper and letter size paper. And yet you only print the dots on letter size paper. When that happens, those two to three extra uh, inches of paper are lost and they get cut off. So you wanna beware of cutting off your dots. If a cutoff happens, it can cost coast to coast thousands of dollars in paying the fees associated with maybe an error at the loan signing. So cutting off docs is huge. Never print docs on duplex. That means that they're double-sided. Um, don't do it. If you want to print the borrower's copies, which we'll talk about in a minute, on duplex, you can. But the actual loan documents that you're signing do not print on duplex, double-sided. No lender accepts that and the counties won't record that deed of trust. The loan documents that have to be recorded, they're not gonna be able to record it. So it's gonna to need to get re-signed, which can cause delays and funding issues and rate lock extensions. So just print it out single, single page, pages at a time. At a loan signing, you must print two sets of documents, one for the signer to keep and one for the actual loan signing. Um, that's understandable though, right? If you're getting a loan for half a million dollars, you're going to want a copy of what you're signing for your records. So you must always print two sets of documents. Um, if that doesn't happen, we're going to find out about it and the lender is going to be upset. Everyone's going to be upset because the borrower must have a copy of those documents. Another reason why it's important is what if the borrower makes a signature mistake on a form? and they don't have a printer, you can grab their copies and swap out the form. So there's also utility behind it, aside from the fact that the borrowers need a copy of what they're signing. Another note is about printing all attachments. So on our website, you'd go on SnapDocs and you'd see the documents. There may be multiple attachments. We, we don't love when there's multiple attachments because there's the ability of missing an attachment, which means you're going to a signing missing a document. Um, but our clients are the ones who upload the docs most of the time. And sometimes our clients will upload 12 attachments, which means you have to be on it, right? You have to make sure as each document is printing, you're double checking and making sure you're downloading it, the docs. Here's a sample of what I mean. We can see online if you don't print or download an attachment. So we have like three attachments right here. See how it says not downloaded by the notary? And this is actually a, an image of an actual error. Notary forgot to download the deeds associated with the signing. And it, it actually, because of that, the borrowers went out of town and every day escrow had to pay a penalty associated with that deed not being recorded. So this is an actual error. So when you're on SnapDocs or whatever portal you're using, just make sure you printed every single attachment. There will be times that you miss an attachment accidentally, but just try to be focused and make sure that every single attachment is printed. Okay, so back to the printing. Um, like I said, cut off docs is a huge mistake, happens all the time and nobody's happy about it. So get to know your printer. 
um, in Coast to Coast Special Instructions, you're going to see a uh, rundown of how to make sure your printer is formatted correctly. Um, if you have a dual tray printer, make sure it's formatted correctly, and it should print out letter size and legal size according to the PDF that's sent to you. Um, if you don't, that's okay. You can use like a PDF uh, page sorter. There is a free one on notaryrotary.com. So I'll send a link out to everybody after the meeting so you can use it. I use it all the time. It's great. Um, our uh, Hannah from our team, she's our quality control manager. She created this uh, form. So it's a test page. So you can print this out if you're printing legal size. And if this little spiky border is missing, you have to reformat and make sure you print it out correctly. So you want to make sure that border is present on the form. Ask. If you're having trouble printing legal and letter and forms are getting re-signed, it's not a question of if this will be acceptable, it'll never be acceptable. If docs are cut off, it'll always be caught and it'll always need to be corrected. So reach out. We will help you print correctly. I've spent hours on the phone with notaries helping them work their printer. And like I said, I'm not a technical genius. I just love YouTube. YouTube's my best friend. And I suggest you get to know your printer through YouTube. Make sure nothing is missing when you print a set of docs. Look at the whole form. If it looks cut off, you have an issue. Compare what the PDF that you were sent looks like and what the printing job looks like. Okay, so you've printed the docs. They look great. You're at the signing. Let's talk about some issues that happen. What if the ID has a problem? The notary rule is the ID can have more than what's on the documents, not less, and not different. So if my ID says Virginia Anna Cherubel and the docs say Virginia Cherubel, I can proceed. But what if it's the reverse of that? My ID says Virginia Cherubel, but the docs say Virginia Anna Cherubel. That's a no-go. It's not going to work. What if the docs have a junior at the end of a signer's name and the ID doesn't? The ID can have more, not less. So that's not going to work. We're going to need to find another form of ID. Um, there is a quick note, and notaries, there is some flexibility for, for this. So what if um, Stephen has an ID, the docs say Stephen, but his ID says Steve. Steven and Steve, they're the same name, right? Steve is a common nickname of Steven. Technically, that can be accepted. Um, it can't be drastically different, but if it's a common nickname, you get to make the call on that one, whether you'll accept that. Now, what if the ID is wrong or expired? You can use credible witnesses. Now, it depends on the state you're in, so get to know your own state's regulation on credible witnesses. But for example, in California, if the borrower does not have valid ID, maybe it's expired or it's different than what's on the documents, the borrower can provide two individuals who have valid ID and who can vouch for the signer and say that, yes, that is the signer. The name on the document is the same as the person who appeared before you. Now, if you're gonna use credible witnesses, always check with the company that's hiring you. Um, one lender I can think of does not accept credible witnesses unless they've been pre-approved. But for the most part, that's a legitimate way to notarize, right? That's a state provision that allows us to continue with notarization, credible witnesses. Um, a, a new notary that we just started working with had his first credible witness signing. It is acceptable. So. When you do that, you record those two credible witnesses in your journal as well. And you can make a note saying that they proved that the signer was who they said they were. But like I said, communication with the company that hires you is critical. Whether it's an ID issue or there's an issue on the documents, communicate, call us, email us, add a note in the website. It's important. Um, it's the notary's responsibility to help guide the borrowers through the documents. So it's important for you to start to get to know the documents if you haven't already. Um, I have a little saying that you can explain the where's and the what's, not the why's and the how's of a loan. 
So I know some notaries will not say anything about the docs. It's actually your responsibility to make the signers feel comfortable enough to sign. So you can't explain why an interest rate is what it is or how an interest rate got to that point or how a fee is what it is, but you can explain where my interest rate is and what my interest rate is. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. It's your responsibility to know, to know how to explain the where's and the what's of a signer's loan. A notary's job as a signing agent in a lot of ways is almost like a babysitter. We're watching the signers sign the documents and making sure they sign and date accurately, as well as making them feel comfortable enough to sign. Again, communication is important. So if there's an issue on the signing, call the person who hires you. The borrower can call their loan officer or the escrow agent. So communication, don't let a signing stop without communicating with the person who hires you and the escrow agent or the loan officer. A big part of being at the signing is to triple check your work. And this is something I'll always say, triple check and don't ever let it stop, stop doing that. Um, so you, when you're at first, you'll triple check your work and then maybe you'll get really comfortable because you know what you're doing and you'll stop. I've never stopped. So as you're signing the documents, have the borrower sign them and then check them as you go. Before you leave the assignment, check the documents again. Um, sometimes it can be uncomfortable, or at least you feel uncomfortable because you have two signers, possibly more, looking at you, watching you, and you can feel a little bit of pressure. Don't let that provide you pressure. You're in charge. Make sure those documents are perfect. So go through them. And don't be embarrassed if you missed something the first time around. In fact, signers like when you, you, when you check, oh, we forgot this initial and get it done. Makes them feel more confident. So slow it down. Make sure you got all of the signatures, dates. Triple check your docs. Before you ship those docs, you're gonna check again. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so the signing is complete. Signing went well, you checked your docs. Communicate with the company that hired you right away. We have a whole team at Coast to Coast, that's the status department, that they're asking you if the signing has been completed. If you do that, it's gonna help our team. And it's gonna let everybody know that the signing's completed. Everybody wants to know. So update the signing status immediately. What I do is when I'm done with the signing and I get in my car, I go on my phone, I add signing completion status. And this is what it looks like when you add that status. Um, add the tracking number. So have those docs right next to you and add the tra tracking number. This is your only opportunity to add that number is when you first update that signing complete status. So add the tracking number. Don't just put tracking or a bunch of zeros. Have that information with you. If you haven't been given a label yet, might you might put a pending label or a waiting label. But most of the time you have a label prior to the signing being complete. So add that tracking number. If scanbacks are requested, you'll know. On our website, it's gonna look something like this, where it'll say required. Upload the scanbacks. Some lenders can fund a loan based off of the scanbacks only. So that's why it's critical to upload scanbacks. If you miss scanbacks and ship, inform us, because lots of times lenders are waiting on those documents to fund the loan. So request, if scanbacks are requested, upload them. Um, a little tip is to download a tiny scanner or genius scan or cam scan or a, a Adobe DC scanner, download those and have it with you. I have a scanner right next to me and I never use it. I only use my little tiny scanner on my phone. I love it. Um, so you can scan on the road. It does take a little bit more time. You have to make sure it looks good, but it's incredibly helpful. So Download that if you haven't already. There's free versions. There's also like a paid version of Tiny Scanner. It's $5. I bought that one and I use it every day of my life. So it, it's very helpful. So before you ship the docs, if you've flagged the documents or added paper clips, remove them. Um, when the docs arrive to our final destination, our client will not be happy if they have to remove potentially 100 uh, paper clips or flags. So remove those flags. Make sure the docs look good. Um, 
we have quality control people who sometimes are the first people to see it. And sometimes it looks like a notary threw the docs in the air and then shuffled them all together. So make sure they're organized and clean and neat because once you're done, that's not the end of the process, right? Someone else has to scan those documents and ship out originals. So they need to look good. Accidents happen. I'll tell you a story early in my notary career. It's pretty embarrassing. I was young, so, so kind of dumb. And I put a set of docs in the back seat of my car. I had a water bottle and I tossed the water bottle and the docs got soaked. Oh, so embarrassing. I could save it because it was just water, right? So I had to hang them up and dry them, but it was stressful. Don't do that, right? So have a good process, have a notary bag, put your docs in there. Everything needs to be kept neat and safe. These are people's loans, right? This is people's mortgage. So we need to treat the documents with respect. So don't ever staple anything, remove flags or paper clips and just keep them neat and clean in a rubber band or a binder clip. I'd suggest binder clips and then ship the documents immediately. Do not delay in shipping the docs. If you do a signing in the morning, ship them that afternoon. If you do a signing in the evening, ship them the next day. It is critical. Every day we have notaries who hold on to docs. Maybe they just don't realize the urgency, but if you're doing loan signings, those documents are date sensitive. If you hold on to them too long, they might not be any good after a certain period of time. So it's really critical that you ship the documents. Do not hold on to documents. And if you don't have a label, scream until you get a label. Exhaust all your resources in order to get a label. It's really critical. On my first training session, we had a notary who joined us who said that she'd been holding on to a set of docs because she didn't have a label. So make sure that you, you, you ask everybody. You have our training at C2C signings email. So if you've exhausted all your resources, go there. I monitor that every day. So we'll help you out. Do not hold on to docs. Okay, let's talk about payment issues for a minute because I think this is on most people's minds, right? So Coast to Coast pays net 30. So 30 days from the signing date, we pay you. And we pay you via deluxe checks. So you actually get an email check. It's really cool and it's legitimate. Um, you print it out, chop off the top, and you can deposit it like a normal check. We email checks on Friday. So it's net 30 and then that Friday you're going to get an email check. So if you're, if you're wondering about payment, log on to deluxe checks and see if we've issued the payment already. Before you ask, do that first. Quick note. Never request signing payment from signer or escrow. So if you believe you have not been paid and you go to the signer or escrow, that's a no-go. Do not do that. The reason why is escrow will get annoyed and they'll tell us the issue and then say, don't use that notary again. If a signing company hires you, you go to the signing company. Now, I can't speak for other companies. I've worked with limited signing companies outside of Coast to Coast, but Coast to Coast will never intentionally not pay you. That's not how we do business. So if you need payment, come to us, communicate. In fact, yesterday on my training at C2C Signings, I got a, a question about payment and we'll forward it you to the right area. Like I said, I don't know about other signing companies. I know that some notaries have had problems where they can't get payment. We will pay you. We will never intentionally not pay you. We have all sorts of um, checks and that, that balances that we have to, to go through. And sometimes things do get missed. So if you believe you have not been paid or you've, you've not been paid accurately, please communicate with us. We want to help you. We're a partnership. We need you. You need us. We're going to do this together. And coast to coast in the, in the 20 plus years that we've been in business has never intentionally not paid someone. So if you have payment requests, email bill at c2csignings.com and, and we will help you. You can also go to the, uh, the SnapDocs portal and on that uh, file, ask for payment or, or ask when the payment's going to be due. We're going to help you. Uh, communication is huge. Uh, we had an issue not too long ago where a notary said she'd never work with us again. And we asked why, and she said why. And our team looked into it and it was a no sign. 
So the signing didn't happen and she didn't get paid for that. Why she didn't get paid was a human error. We forgot to check one box. That's gonna happen. Communicate. Now we're in good terms. And so now we have another partner. So we're always gonna make it right. I don't know about other companies, but I know coast to coast, we're always gonna make it right. So communicate with us. Okay, so real briefly, we're gonna talk about important documents. Um, last week, we did a kind of uh, individual documents training course, uh, which will be on YouTube shortly. So, and we're gonna replay the, a live course. So we'll go over that in the future. But my biggest piece of advice to give you confidence on assigning is to familiarize yourself with loan documents. When in doubt about a form, ask the company that hires you and read the document. Read the document, go on Google, research what it means. It's important that you know what the documents mean and how to fill them in. So ask, again, communication. If there are errors on documents, it can result in delays in funding, fees, rate extensions, pretty much money lost. And it's your responsibility that the documents get filled out correctly. Don't let that intimidate you. All of this is doable. It's, it's not too hard once you know how to do it. And remember that anything can be fixed. Uh, a few months back, we had a notary who wasn't, was a notary, not a signing agent, but she did a loan signing. And then she went MIA. We couldn't get a hold of her. When we finally got a hold of her, she was like, I shred, I shred the docs because I know I messed up. Do not do that. Anything can be fixed. We can fix anything. So don't destroy the documents. Don't go MIA. We're going to help you. And maybe one person will be frustrated, but talk to any of the managers and we're there to help because we know the reason why we know how to fill in these documents is because we've made every mistake there is. So anything can be fixed and we're gonna help you do that. Real quick, here are some uh, oh, examples of notarizations. So we notaries are required to fill in two types of forms if the, for, the document asks for it, acknowledgements and jurats. Every state is a little different. Um, I'll also send you today a sample of uh, acknowledgements for all states. But this is an example of California acknowledgement and a jurat. To the left, we have the acknowledgement. At the top, we have the venue where the signing takes place. Then we have to add the signing date. Before me, this is where you put your name as appears on your notary stamp. So remember the name on the certificate where you put your name, it must match your stamp. So if your notary stamp is really long, I'm sorry to say you have to put that name. So the full notary name. In California, after you put your notary name, you also have to put your title notary public. Not all states require that, but some do. Then you put the name of the signer. So signer's name as appears on the signature line of the document you're notarizing. So you reference the document you're notarizing and that's the form that you add to the, uh, the certificate. An acknowledgement, the purpose of an acknowledgement is to acknowledge that the signer appeared before you and proved to you that they are who they say they are based off of satisfactory evidence, which is generally, um, an ID or a passport, right? That's the purpose of an acknowledgement. A jurat certificate, the purpose is to give those signers an oath. So they're promising the truthfulness of what's on that form. So that's what a jurat does. Jurat looks a lot more simple, less information, but we get a lot of errors on this form. So again, there's the venue here up at the top subscribed and sworn to and informed before me on this date. So it has the date where you're, you put the date and then the month and then the year. And then this by portion is for the signer's name as appears on the doc. So sometimes notaries will notarize themselves by putting their name right here. That's not what that portion is for. It's for the signer as it, the name appears on the document. And again, there's a signature here and then there's a stamp. Here. Okay, on to the next one. Here's the note. So the note in a loan signing is the most important form for the borrower. This is the borrower's promise to pay. So that's, oh, I think, could we mute everyone real quick? Could you make sure that you're muted?
think we have someone unmuted. Okay. So at the top there, like I said, this is the note, borrowers promise to pay. When you're on a loan signing, I would put this document at the very top because there, if there are issues with the loan, this is where they're gonna be most of the time. So when I present this document, I have the borrowers review the information that's highlighted. These are the borrower's loan terms. Make sure that those are good with the borrower. And then it requires a signature. Hold on a second. I made a quick note here on the seal. New notaries will sometimes stamp where it says seal. You're technically not allowed to stamp yeah. unless it's a notarization. Okay, hold on. We've got someone talking. Let me mute everyone real quick. Oh, there you go. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so back to the point. If it says seal note near the signature line, but there is no notarization accompanying the form, an acknowledgement or a giraffe, you're not allowed to stamp that. If you stamp it, we're getting this form re-signed. So seal, if it's not accompanied with a notarization, is just referring to the borrower's signature. So do not stamp something that doesn't have a notarization attached. That's the note. This is the right to cancel. This is a very important document and it's your responsibility as a signing agent to make sure that this is filled out correctly. So this is a sample of a right to cancel. The right to cancel is a federal reg regulation that is provided to borrowers that are refinancing their primary residency. So it doesn't apply to new purchases and it doesn't apply to second homes or investment homes. It's just for refinancing your primary residence. This is a sample. The format might be a little bit different depending on the lender, but you, all the items are gonna be there. It's always gonna be similar. The top date here, sometimes it's pre-printed, sometimes you have to fill it in. That needs to be the date of the transaction, so the signing date. There's a second date here, kind of in the middle of the page, where it says that you must send this notice no later than midnight of. It's your responsibility to add that date. So the right to cancel is three business days and Sunday does not count. Now I'm gonna help you in a minute and I'll show you the, the right to cancel calendar. So I'll also send you a right to cancel calendar. Every notary needs this printed or on their phone and reference it at every signing. So it's your responsibility to make sure that this is filled in or have the borrower fill it in. If you're signing today, your right to cancel date is the 30th. If it calls for initials, add the initials. If you initial even or have the borrower initial, even if it doesn't call for initials, that's okay. That won't be a problem. Uh, sometimes you can tell that a new notary is doing this signing because they'll have the borrower sign where it says, I wish to cancel. Sometimes the borrower's names will be pre-printed there and borrowers just automatically want to sign there. When I'm on a signing, I actually cover that section just to prevent that from happening. Make sure they don't sign where it says, I wish to cancel, unless they wish to cancel. But most of the time, that's not gonna happen on your signing. The signature will be at the very bottom of the page. And that date there needs to match the top date of the right to cancel. So these two dates must match. Sometimes this form will ask for an additional date. Make sure they date that at that additional date spot. If there are errors on this document, it can cause huge issues. So slow it down, make sure this is filled out correctly. Uh, sometimes on a signing, you might start to get in a rhythm when it comes to the right to cancel, stop the signing and make sure that everyone understands what we're doing and it's filled out properly. Here's a sample of the right to cancel or rescission calendar. So if you're signing today, you look at the date and that'll show you the ends on, that's the right to cancel date. So here at Coast to Coast, many of us have this calendar printed right next to us. Uh, as a signing agent, have this in your notary bag and reference it at every signing. You might think that you know exactly when it is by just counting, but you might forget about a holiday. 
I don't celebrate any holidays, so I always need to reference this because I don't ever know when the holidays are. But even if you're someone who does, always reference it. I recently had a notary who's done hundreds of jobs. She knows the right to cancel. She filled it in wrong just because she counted incorrectly. She forgot how many days were in February. So always reference your right to cancel calendar. And I'll send you a copy of this. This is just from the NNA. So you can reference it just from the NNA. This is the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act is not a notarization, but it's your responsibility as a notary to make sure that this is filled in correctly. The form itself will tell you how it needs to be completed. So here at the very top, it'll tell you how many forms of ID that you need to verify with the signer. So in this case, this lender requires two forms of ID. So the notary checked the driver's license and the social security card. So this is your responsibility to fill this in. At the very bottom, you'll sign your name, date, print your name and your title notary public. I've heard some people being directed to add signing agent. Your official title is notary public, according to the lender and the escrow company. So you can put notary public or notary public signing agent. That's fine. But notary public needs to be there. That's technically your title, your official title. So this is your responsibility to fill in. A new notary might have the borrower fill it in, the borrower sign it. Um, or leave it blank. This is for you. Real briefly, we'll talk about kind of hidden notarizations and hidden signatures. Um, this is an errors and omissions compliance agreement. It has this sneaky little jurat at the very bottom. When you're at a loan signing, look at the entire form. Memorize what jurats and acknowledgements look like so where you can identify the ones that are kind of hidden. This happens all the time. Every single day we get multiple copies of this error in particular with this specific form. So memorize what a jurat looks like, what an acknowledgement looks like. That way you don't miss them. Here's an example of a hidden signature that happens all the time. This is for a VA loan. So it's a report and certification of loan disbursements. It needs to be signed by the veteran and their spouse right here on the second page but it looks kind of intimidating and it looks like we could miss something and it's often missed. There's also some initials here. Basically what this is, is if the borrower does not want to provide their ethnicity, race, or sex, they need to initial here. Most of the time this is pre-filled in though, but make sure you don't miss the signature like that. Here's another VA form that we get missed signatures on all the time. It's an addendum to the uniform residential loan application. Again, it looks kind of complicated. It looks like we could miss something. Uh, second page has two signatures right here. And this is a sample of an actual uh, form where the notary had the borrower sign at the very bottom but missed that top signature here. So get comfortable with those loan docs. Look for signatures, signature lines, borrower's name. Here's another uh, document that gets missed all the time. This is a tax form. We can't change tax forms, right? That's the IRS and good luck trying to get that changed, but it needs to be signed. So there's two little sneaky hidden signatures on these forms. This is the new um, uniform residential loan application. So the old one had more signatures. This one is kind of complicated because there's not really too many signatures. And if you're a signing agent, you're used to more. But this is the loan app 1003, we call it the 1003. The new, the new requirements are on the first page. There's an initial. If the borrower is applying for joint credit, so right here it'll list it. If it's individual credit, they don't need to initial. But if there's a co-borrower, the person that's listed on the form must initial this form right here. That's on page one. And then on page five is a signature. And if there's multiple signers, they only need to initial their own form and sign their own form. So there's gonna be separated. So there can be up to, I think like 13 pages in a loan application if there's two borrowers. So there's really only one initial needed and one signature. Okay, so before we wrap it up with the presentation, here are just some tips. Uh, if you're unsure of what a document means, ask the company that hired you. 
search the inter the internet. I, oops, I put interest, the internet, search the internet. That's what I do all the time. If I'm unsure of a form, typically there's gonna be something out there that helps you. And then read the form. That's how I got to know the forms is by reading them and asking. Don't leave a document blank or unsigned without letting everybody know. So if a borrower refused to sign something, put a note, post a note on the form, update the website, make sure everybody knows. Because what'll happen is the docs will come back to the lender if you don't do that. And then they're gonna ask us, they're gonna say the notary made a mistake, they missed this form. So there's all these additional steps that'll happen. If you just put a note on the website and on the form, everyone will know right away. If you don't have the forms completed accurately, there can be a delay in funding and recording of a loan. So there's penalties and fees that can occur for the signer, for the lender and escrow company, and ultimately the signing company as well. Coast to Coast spends thousands of dollars on notary errors. So if a rate lock is missed, there's a penalty for that, Coast to Coast will pay it. So we could have made $20 on a file, now we're going to lose up to potentially thousands of dollars on a file because of a notary error. So communication, that's the biggest thing. Communicate with us. Don't leave things uh, blank, unsigned. And if there's a problem, jump to getting it fixed because there can be major issues if, if we don't. And failure to complete forms accurately may require a visit to the signer again at your own cost. So lender and escrow will view a, an issue on the documents as a notary error, and they're not gonna pay us to go back again. So we can't pay you. So it's best to get it done the first time. So again, triple check your documents, ask everyone for help, scream until you get a response and communicate. That's so important. And some of this can seem intimidating, but it's doable. It's doable. You just have to communicate, Research, take your time and triple check your docs.